It's been just over 24 hours since Kyle Harmon was named the new head football coach for the Elida Bulldogs, and he joins us here in the studio. Coach Kyle Harmon, glad to have you along. Congratulations, first of all, on the new job. Thanks for having me in. I appreciate it. So it's a homecoming to you. You played for Elida uh, back in, you graduated from 2003. Uh, you played there for a while. You've coached there for a while. You've been in the school district teaching for a couple years, but you still feel like this is kind of a homecoming talk about it. How does that feel to come home, so to, so to speak, to Elida football? You know, coaching at Elida from 2005 to 2015, I had some really good experiences with some really good teams. I saw it, you know, come from an 0-10 team to a state semifinal football team. Um, you know, from there, 2015, I moved on, coached at uh, Lima Senior, I coached at Walpock, and just coming back, you know, I just, I want to see the program turn back around. You know, I want to see those kids win. You know, I'm just excited to be back. You're the run pass coordinator at Wapak, and those Wapak teams in recent memory have gone 20 and 4, so the Redskins have had a, a huge amount of success. What do you hope to kind of bring from that, to bring from what you've learned from Travis Moyer over to Elida's program? You know, Wapak, you know, you just look at that whole program, they're just a machine. You know, a coach has it going on over there, the kids buy in, they show up, their work ethic is great. You know, if we can resemble anything like that, it's going to be a positive for Elida football. You know, offensively talking, you know, as pass game, pass game and outside run game coordinator, um, we're obviously going to run the football. You know, that's obviously need to be able to run the football to win games. You've got to stop the run. But you'll see a mix. You know, when I was at Elida before, we ran the football. We threw the football fairly well. Uh, we did some good things. You know, we may go under center a little bit. Not sure, but looking forward to getting rolling. You're still, or you have been in Elida School District. You actually had a team meeting today. You guys, you've already had a chance to meet with your guys. How'd that go today? Uh, we had 58 guys show up. Um, the Apollo kids weren't there, obviously. Um, so three grades, 58 guys, that's up from last year. You know, there's some kids that came back out that, you know, Friday night impact players. You know, hopefully they stick it out, get in the weight room and start working hard. Awesome. Elida went 0-10 last year. They've lost their last 16 games. So it's been kind of a rough go for Elida football um, on the field, off the field. Where do you see the culture of Elida football right now, and where would you like to see it go by, say, this time next year? You know, just looking at the kids right now, you know, they've been, they've been wanting to hear who the coach is going to be. There's been a buzz around the school. There is some excitement going on. Um, our team meeting today, the kids seemed excited. They seem like they're ready to come in and start working hard come Monday. Um, I think things are going to start trending upward, you know, we obviously have to get in the weight room, get bigger, faster and stronger and have to be able to compete in the WBL. You got you to be all three of those. What is a Kyle Harmon coached football team going to look like? What, it, what would it look like to have kind of your stamp of, of approval, of confidence, of ability on a football team? You know, if you're going to have high expectations of your football players, you have to have high expectations of your coaches as well. Um, you can expect to see the kids be well coached, be fundamental. You know, when, when the bullets start flying on Friday nights, all you can really rely on is your fundamentals. So you're going to see uh, coaches in the kids' ears, coaching them up every play, and that's kind of the goal is to teach them along the way what and why they're doing things. You know, pretty much since you graduated from high school, you've been involved in coaching, I think, just about every year to some extent since you graduated. What experiences kind of have you gotten? What are some of the people that you've modeled your coaching style after? Well, basically the guys I've coached for, you know, uh, Jason Carpenter came into Elida, you know, and it was, it was not good. It was not good. You know, he, he wrote an 0-20 streak for a while, but he was getting the things where they needed to be, you know, and we had some classes come through, and luckily we got it turned around at that point, you know, to where we were playing respectable football and doing some good things. Um, from there, I went to Lima Senior, with uh, Andre Griffin. The day I interviewed with him, I, I knew I was in. I knew I was in. Uh, great guy. You know, he has so many connections around here. There, there are people I met when I was with him that, you know, I'm, I'm so, so thankful for that opportunity. And then being on Walpock staff, you know, they're, they're a machine. Um, they're, they're, they go about doing things very businesslike, and their work ethic is great. You know, and if, if we can model anything like that program, I, I think we're going to do some good things in the future. Having seen both you know, really successful football and football that's kind of left something to be desired, that's had kind of some rough spots in it. Um, how do you take all of those experiences and approach Elida football now and say, hey, look, because of, because I've had the really high highs and I've been able to kind of experience the, the Ofer teams, 
here's what we can do to kind of get back on track and get Elida football back to where you and all the Elida fans want it? You know, it comes down to, you know, your overall mentality of the team and their work ethic. You know, you learn a lot in the weight room. You know, the weight room doesn't lie. Mm. You know, when you get in there, you're going to figure out who's all about it and who's not. Um, it comes down to work ethic and the buying in and uh, showing up every day and, you know, putting it out there for your team and your brothers. You've self-described, you describe yourself as an overcoacher. So, and I'm sure there's people on the stands that say, I do that all the time. I'm, oh, I'm an yeah. overcoacher also. Oh, yeah. What does that mean to you to describe yourself as an overcoacher? You know, to me, it's, uh, it's one of those things, um, talked about high expectations of your players and your staff. You know, you should be coaching every play. You know, there's not a play that goes by where you're not talking to the kid, asking them a question, you know, just reinforcing why they're doing, what they're doing, you know, just, just things like that. They, they need to have feedback every play. You're 2-0 as a head coach because after Jason Carpenter resigned, you stepped in for a couple games, last two games of the season, and were head coach. So what did you learn in those two games, stepping in from assistant to the head coach, and how are you going to apply that to your current situation? You know, actually, it was week six and seven. It was in the middle okay. of the season. Okay. He ended up coming back towards the end of the season, um, finishing the last three games. But, you know, really, you have to have a good staff if you want to be successful. You know, Jason was a really good coach and surrounded himself with good people. And, you know, he was gone, but the program still ran itself on Friday night because he had good coaches in place and everybody was working towards a common goal. Obviously, we missed him, but, you know, we were still able to be successful without him. And to that point, and there's a lot of emphasis that's always put on the head coach of a football team. You know, the, the head coach is responsible for all the great things that happen. He's responsible for all the terrible things that happen to a football team. But really, how important is it to get your guys, to get your coordinators, to get your assistant coaches, to get the people around you that will help coach up the guys in the way that you want them to be coached when you're not necessarily there in the room or right there next to them? You know, like you said, you're only good, as good as your support staff. So obviously you have to surround yourself with good people. Um, you have to get people that are there for the kids. They are there to work. They're there for the right reasons and people that genuinely love coaching football. You know, football seven days a week. That's what people don't really understand. Once it gets going, you know, you're in seven days a week. We talked about last year at Walpock, we had one day off the whole entire year. You know, or football season, sorry. Sure, uh, you sure. just have to get guys that want to be there, want to put the time in, and want to be around the kids. Kyle Harmon's the new head football coach at Elida High School. Coach, congratulations and best of luck in the new year. Thank you very much.